Hello Year 7 and welcome to our next lesson on church and state um, in the Tudor period. We've been looking at Henry VIII haven't we for the last couple of lessons and we're going to be shift over um, today to looking at one of Henry VIII's children, Elizabeth I, who became Queen of England. So hopefully you should now be able to see my slides. And our big question today is what problems did Elizabeth I face? Our key words are um, counter-reformation, Spanish Armada, successor, and taxation. So you might want to um, write those down. Um, and as we go through the um, lesson, you'll come across those and you can write down some definitions as to what they mean. Um, our understanding questions, what was the most serious problem facing Elizabeth? So as well as knowing about loads of different problems she faced, what do we think the most serious one was? And for our skills, we're going to be looking at cause and consequence. So just as a recap, in case you've missed um, the last few lessons, we suggest you go back. But as a quick recap, just to jog your memory. So in the 1530s, the church, which has been Catholic for all this time, is suddenly um, rocked by a new type of Christianity. It's called Protestantism, and it's set up by this man here with a fantastic flat hat, Martin Luther. Okay, He started it as a protest, which is where Protestant comes from, against corruption in the Catholic Church. Now, Henry VIII, he'd been a Catholic and was even described by the Pope as the defender of the faith because he wrote a piece criticising Martin Luther and his new type of Christianity, Protestantism. But Henry VIII didn't, didn't stay um, being regarded as defender of the faith because his first wife, Ca Catherine of Aragon, could not produce a male heir. She was only getting pregnant with girls. Um, and Henry wanted, not only did he want a boy um, as a son, he also wanted to marry Anne Boleyn. Anne Boleyn um, was a Protestant and he needed a divorce. So then we've They've got this character who has come across, we've come across in the last few lessons. This is Thomas Cromwell. He said he looked a little bit like Martin Luther, which is helpful because they're both Protestants. Thomas Cromwell advised Henry to start his own Protestant church so that he didn't have to stick to the rules of, of Catholicism. He could have a divorce if he wanted it. Um, and so the new church was called the Church of England. And it still stands today. It's still the state church in England. So... In our last lesson, we also said that Henry and Thomas Cromwell dissolved the monasteries, means they got rid of the monasteries, um, which were Catholic, and that gave them more power and more money. In our last lesson, we said that £140,000 each year were now given um, to Henry, and that helped him in terms of fighting foreign wars against France. Um, and Henry, and as we should have known this from primary school, Henry subsequently had six wives, and you should know that they are divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. That's what happened to those six wives. So as a result of those six wives, there were plenty of children to replace Henry when he died in 1547. So this is our, um, th this is our, our line before we get to Elizabeth I, um, who is um, the, our focus for today's lesson. So the first person who replaced um, Henry VIII was his son, um, and it was his son from Jane Seymour, um, who's his third wife, and that was Edward VI. So Edward became king in 1547, but he really sadly died when he was only 15 years old. And then it, things get a bit weird. So it passed over to a woman called Lady Jane Grey. Now, some people don't even count her as a queen because she only ruled for nine days in July 1553. Now, she was a second cousin of Henry VIII, but Edward VI wanted Jane to succeed him because she, because she was a Protestant. Okay, So they did thought, my, my dad, Henry VIII, has gone to all of this effort to change the country from Catholic to Protestant. We don't want to ruin it by having a Catholic king or queen in charge. So he chose Lady Jane Grey, um, but unfortunately, um, some people in England were very unhappy that she had been um, put forward to be queen, um, and she was and put in prison and then she was beheaded and that opened the door for this lady here Mary the first now she is often known as Bloody Mary so she becomes queen in 1553 and um, she was a Catholic so what what Edward VI was so worried about a Catholic taking charge again and um, she did take over and one of the things that she did was she started to um, persecute which in this term means to treat people badly because of their beliefs she started to persecute Protestants. So they would even be burned at the stake um, for not being Catholic, for being Protestant. Um, and it is thought that she burned hundreds of Protestants to death. Um, but Mary, um, she also dies, and that opens the door for this woman here, Elizabeth I. 
So Elizabeth was Queen of England and Ireland from the 17th of November 1558 until her death in 1603, and she returned England to a Protestant country. Um, she never married, so she was nicknamed the Virgin Queen, and she was the last Tudor monarch. So your first task today, and you're going to need to pause it to have a look at this, have a look at this portrait of Elizabeth I. Portraits were really, really important to um, Elizabeth, and as she got older, she actually refused to have her portraits painted because she didn't want people to see what she looked like as she got older and more aged. So your first task then, have a look at this portrait, and we're going to be asking, what can we infer? Infer, one of our keywords that we've used in history this year, is when you look at a source or a picture or a piece of writing and you try and work out some information which goes beyond what we can see. So it's a bit like a detective coming into a crime scene and going, right, what clues have I got and what can I infer or work out based on that? So I'm going to give you a clue to get you started. Okay, so if you look at Elizabeth here, she has got her right hand resting on the globe. Now that has been painted on purpose. What do you think that's trying to say? What is it trying to suggest about Elizabeth that she has got her hand on top of and controlling the world? You might also want to look at things like what's going on in the backgrounds of this picture and the types of clothes she's wearing. So try and come up with three or four different things that we can infer, that we can work out about Elizabeth from this picture. Pause it, have a go, or do it, come back to it and do it at the end. So this is handy. Elizabeth I is faced with um, six problems um, throughout her reign from 1558 and 1603. And helpfully, we've been able to put them into an acronym, which is, as it's Elizabeth I, it is E first. So her six problems that we're going to be focusing on are enemies, family, island, religion, successor, and tax. Okay, and we'll go through each of those individually if there's anything that you don't understand about it. So our first problem then is enemies. Well, just to say as well, just flip back to this one. One of your one of your next tasks is to be deciding which of these is the most serious, which is the worst problem that Elizabeth I um, is faced with. So you might want to be thinking about that while we're talking through this. So first one is enemies. England's big enemies were the Catholic countries, France and Spain. Remember. England has become Protestant under Henry VIII, and although it's flipped back to Catholic briefly under Mary I, Bloody Mary, um, Elizabeth has brought it back to being a Protestant country. Um, so the Catholic countries like France and Spain are not going to be happy about it. Um, and both of those countries had the support of the Pope. The Pope at this point was the most powerful man in the world because people believed he was the voice of God. Spain's king was this man here, Philip II, who uh, is also wearing a fantastic black hat that looks like a, a jelly. Um, so Spain, although he was king of Spain, he had been married to Mary I, Bloody Mary, before she died. So he had been the king of England um, and he wanted to be king of England again. Uh, he did briefly think about trying to marry Elizabeth. But in the end, he decided he was going to do he was going to try and take control in a different way. So Spain even tried to invade England in 1588 with the Spanish Armada. And this picture shows that. Um, and over our next lesson, we're going to be looking at what the Spanish Armada was. Thankfully for England, that invasion from Spain, the Spanish Armada, failed. So that's the first problem. Second problem is family. Um, so Elizabeth's cousin was called Mary Queen of Scots. That's a different Mary from Bloody Mary, so don't get confused. Um, this is her wearing a fetching pink number. Now, Mary Queen of Scots was also a Catholic, and lots of Catholics in England wanted her to be the queen because they'd got used to having a Catholic queen before Henry VIII, and then also when Bloody Mary um, brought, um, uh, brought England back to being Catholic. So lots of Catholics want Mary Queen of Scots to be their queen as well. Now Scotland decided it wants to be ruled by Protestants. So Scotland had its own reformation, so Mary was put in prison, um, but she escaped and fled, ran away to England. Um, and so Elizabeth was in this difficult situation where it's her family member, um, and she probably doesn't, didn't want to, to kill her, but she was also threatened by her because lots of people wanted her to be queen. And there's some brilliant films that came out about this, this period of time. There's one that came out last year, um, all about Mary, Queen of Scots and Elizabeth's relationship. And Elizabeth eventually decides um, that she is going to have her cousin killed um, in 1587. Um, Mary, Queen of Scots, has her head chopped off. Um, and that's because... the. Um, Queen Elizabeth believed that Mary was trying to have have Elizabeth killed. 
<laughs> so problem three is Ireland. Elizabeth considered herself Queen of Ireland, but any, many Irish people absolutely hated her. And that's mainly because Ireland was and is a mostly Catholic country. Um, and they didn't want a Protestant like Elizabeth leading them. So there was a huge rebellion in North Ireland in 1559. At this point, Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland hadn't split, so it's all one island together. But in the northern part of the island, um, there was a huge rebellion, and Elizabeth spent the equivalent of £2 million in today's money, sending 17,300 soldiers to try and control the situation. At that point, it was the most amount of soldiers that we'd ever sent overseas to try and um, fix a problem. So a very, very expensive problem for Elizabeth to fix. Fourth problem then was religion. As we've mentioned already, the previous queen, Mary I, or Bloody Mary, had returned England to be in a Catholic country um, after um, the Reformation under Henry VIII. So what Mary did was called the Counter-Reformation. Counter means to sort of go back on something, um, and Reformation means big change. So um, Counter-Reformation means to go back on this big change to try and turn England back to being Catholic. Um, and Mary, as we said, had burned hundreds of Protestants to death um, during her reign, hence the nickname Bloody Mary. So the Catholics in England wanted things to remain the same. They wanted, um, they wanted it to be like it was when Mary was the Queen. Um, and Catholics also had the support of powerful countries like Spain. Some Protestants wanted revenge for Mary's actions. So when Elizabeth has taken over, they want to go right. So when Mary was queen, she was able to burn all of these Protestants. We want to burn all the Catholics now that we've got our queen in charge. Um, so Elizabeth had got this big problem to try and keep everybody happy. Um, so what she said was she was going to keep England Protestant, but she was going to allow Catholics to follow their religion in peace. So Elizabeth, unlike Mary, she didn't go about um, persecuting um, people of a different religion. She didn't set fire to people in the same way as Bloody Mary. Right, two more problems to get through. Problem five was successor. Elizabeth never married um, and liked her image as the Virgin Queen. Now, successor is one of our key words. Um, it comes from succession, and it means who is going to come after the king or queen. So for us, the successor to our queen, Elizabeth II, um, is going to be Prince Charles. Um, but that's because that's her son. And for Queen Elizabeth, she didn't have any children, so people were worried who was going to take over. And this, got, people were even more worried in 1562, where Elizabeth got a virus called smallpox and she nearly died. So the important people, like people in Parliament, were saying to Elizabeth, you need to get married, you need to have some kids, um, because we need somebody to take over once you've passed away. Um, and when Elizabeth died in 1603, that was the end of the Tudors. That was the end of the Tudor line. Um, and Mary, Queen of Scots' son, James, this man here, with his uh, fantastic pose, um, he became King of England as well as being King of Scotland. So he is he's a bit weird situation where he is James I of England and James VI of Scotland. This is our final. Oh, just, just quickly on this one. It says that she's the Virgin Queen, and obviously she never married. But one of the weirdest things about this, um, about Elizabeth's situation, is that it wasn't that she never, ever had boyfriends. When she was really young, she actually did have a relationship with her stepmom's husband. Now, that is weird, Elizabeth. Um, but she never married, um, and therefore um, the Tudor line came to an end. Final one then is tax, and taxation is one of our key words. Tax, as we have looked at when we've looked at things like the Peasants' Revolt, is money that the government takes from ordinary people in order to do things like pay to go to war, or maybe pay for hospitals nowadays, pay for education. Um, so everybody pays a little bit of tax in order to um, pay for things in the country. Now, Elizabeth's government needed lots of money to fight off invasions. We said about the Spanish Armada in 1588. They need to stop people from invading them and also to stop rebellions. Ireland, as we've looked at, 1599, um, they were really unhappy. Um, and so they were, um, they were rebelling, going against the, um, the rule of Elizabeth I. Now, the best way to raise money was to raise taxes. So money paid by people in your country. Um, but at this time, people in England, there was so much poverty. There were so many poor people. And that made taxes really unpopular. Because if you're struggling to feed your family, and then this queen, who we've seen pictures of, looks all, um, she's dressed in all her finery. She lives in incredible wealth. And she's saying, actually, I need more money from you because I want to go and fight a war in Ireland. Um, then they're going to be, people are going to be really upset about it. 
Um, now, one thing that Elizabeth did do was that she recognised that people were very poor. So she introduced a poor law, which was like an early form of benefits, an early way of giving money to the poorest people in society. Um, and Parliament became more important, important during this time. Parliament is like a group of, of MPs, groups of members of Parliament, important people who make decisions about the country. Um, and at this time, um, Parliament um, were becoming a little bit more powerful than they were previously. And they actually had, had the power to say no to Elizabeth. So sometimes she would go to the, her, her Parliament and say, right, I need a load of money in order to... Um, go to Ireland, send more troops to Ireland, and they were often refused um, because they didn't want to keep taxing people too much. So this is your task then. You have got to rank Elizabeth's problems from most to least serious. Okay, you can do this. We've done this as like a diamond nine formation before. We've done that in plenty of our lessons. You can do it um, in, a, in a line, whatever way works for you. But I want you to have the most serious at one end um, and then work your way through until the least serious. Um, if you've not already been thinking about that, you might want to go back and um, read through those again. Once you have done that, your task three is to put Elizabeth's problems into perms categories. Now, a perm is a uh, curly-haired hairstyle. Um, this was former England player Kevin Keegan in the 1970s. We don't mean that, um, but that might help you remember what they are. So the perms categories are political, to do with who is in charge, economic, to do with money, religious to do with God and the church, military to do with wars and social to do with how people live. So you might want to have a look look back for instance if we look at this one tax have a look read through that and think what categories does it fit into. Now the obvious one to get you started with tax is all about money. So it's a definitely an economic um, problem. So you could put it in that category, but you might also look at it and say, right, what else does it fit in with? It might even, it might fit in with a social one because it's looking at people are in poverty, people are struggling with money, and that's affecting how they live. So you could say that it's not only an economic problem, but also a social one. And then your final task, um, task four, is to answer this question. I would like a, um, a paragraph um, submitted. Um, on this one. So the question is, religion was the most serious problem Elizabeth faced. Do you agree? Do you agree that it was the most serious problem that she faced? And I've put some sentence starters to help you. You don't need to use these, um, but it might help you to lay out your answer. So you need to agree or disagree that religion was the most serious problem. Make sure you commit to that. You can say, I somewhat agree and somewhat disagree, but make sure you explain why. Give some evidence, give some stuff from the slides about why you think that. Use information from your learning and then explain it. This is the really important bit where you explain why you've put that. This is the most serious problem or this was, the, this was not as... Um, serious as another problem because explain why you think um, like that okay um, please submit your work or oh, before we do that I think I've got a recap of your tasks so you've got your four tasks there um, firstly what can we infer from the portrait secondly rank Elizabeth's problems thirdly put them into different categories perms categories um, fourthly, write a paragraph on whether religion was the biggest problem Elizabeth faced. You need to have your work handed in via Google Classroom before Friday's deadline. Um, if you have any questions, please do message on Google Classroom or email your teacher and my email address is there at the bottom. Okay, best of luck. Um, I'm sure you'll do brilliantly. I look forward to marking your work. Stay safe, everybody, and I'll see you very soon. Bye-bye.